Hey guys, this is Tony. I'm going to be talking about how to calculate debt space using the Borg method. So in your notes, you probably have this equation in your notes that you find. And um, for me, it was really hard to memorize this equation. So what I had done was um, I reverse engineered the equation so that it's a little bit more manageable. And I was able to deduce it back down to its original um, form, which is the Bohr equation, which is PV equals PV, PV over PV. So I hopefully, um, by telling you how the logic works, um, you could also only use a really small equation like that and be able to solve anything you want. So before we begin, I have to talk about what dead space actually is. So I'm going to get started with um, a little diagram of a little um, lung. I'm going to draw it with, this is not really going to be drawn to size, but what we have is your lung is full of alveoli. I'm just going to just squiggle it around. Uh, it's, it's going to be great clusters, but it's going to take too long. Okay, so your lung is full of alveoli. Uh, alveoli. And when you breathe in, you breathe in a certain amount of air. I mean, we're going to be talking about um, tidal volume right now. So um, I'm just going to make this a dB, you know, dT. That's your volume of tidal volume. What happens is you breathe in your air. And your air is going to go deeper and deeper into your lung. And then at one point, it's going to reach your alveoli. And in your alveoli, there's going to be a gas exchange between the blood vessels. I'm going to just draw it over here and your actual alveoli. And then there's a blood vessel. And what happens is you, ha you have gas exchange between uh, your blood and these alveoli. So in these cases, wherever I have for blue is going to be your alveolar space. Blue is going to be your alveolar space. It's going to be your alveolar volume. However, there's another volume that you have to take account for, and it's this volume over here that's going to be where there's no gas exchange. So the point in which you don't have gas exchange anymore is at your terminal bronchioles. And this space is going to be known as your dead space. So there are two types of dead space, and this one is going to be the anatomical dead space. However, if there were an instance, I'm just going to go back to this image over here, where you have fibrosis around the, your alveoli, there's going to be no more gas exchange between your alveoli and your blood. So if if it turned out that air was going into your alveoli, it, there's no gas exchange, so this would be considered dead space as well. So if your if air went into your alveolar spaces and then there's no gas exchange as well, just like what I just drew you wrote over here, this extended form over here would be your physiological. Let me move this guy over here so that I can see it. up to that that little bronchial over here, this would be your physiological dead space. Uh, then it's going away. All right. So if I were going to draw this in a bar graph so that it would be a little bit easier to see, You're going to have two volumes. One volume, uh, let me just keep it over here so you can see it. One volume over here is going to be dead space. And then this volume over here is going to be alveolar space. So let me just refer to this equation again so that we can we can solve it. So VB, this is actually your VB. It's a volume. It's a volume of dead space. VT over here, VT is your tidal volume. All 
All right. So we have our volumes. You have your patience. He's taking a, a, a tidal volume breath. And what he's going to be breathing in is he's going to be breathing atmospheric air. And the thing that you have to know about atmospheric air is that there's very little CO2 in the air. So there's going to be zero millimeters of mercury of CO2 in the air. And this is a pressure. This term is going to be known as, um, well, I, I don't want to, I don't want to use this one right now, so I'm just going to leave it at that. So there's going to be zero millimeters of mercury of um, CO2. And as it goes in, um, if it goes into your dead space, there's going to be no gas exchange. It's going to remain at zero millimeters of mercury of CO2. That's not too bad. However, when you go down to your alveolar space, your alveolar space, your alveolar space as I showed you before with this little picture over here, I'm just gonna move it over here. Your alveolar space over here, there is going to be gas exchange between your blood and your and, and the alveolar space. So this space, what we're going to do is we're going to exchange the CO2 that is in the blood, and then we're going to exchange it into CO2 that's in the alveoli. And it turns out, something that's very convenient is that the CO2 in the blood will equilibrate and become the CO2 at the alveolar, at the alveolar space. So when someone puts a needle into your arm and they're going to um, take your arterial blood gases, you can essentially find out what is in your alveoli at the same exact time because these two values will equilibrate. So this is known. Well, uh, this, is, this is known. You, you can, you can, um, you can solve, you, you can find a reading for that. So um, usually with a normal person, it's going to be around 46 millimeters of mercury of CO2. And I'm just going to keep it, I will just use a number here so that it's easier to, um, to explain. But over here you have uh, 46 millimeters of mercury of CO2. All right, so this is a pressure. What we want to do is we, we get this guy, we, they breathe it in, and they have, they have a certain amount of volume in alveolar space and a certain volume in a dead space. We don't know any of these volumes. All we have is this um, pressure. And what happens is we tell them to breathe into a bag. And when we tell them to breathe them in a bag, this, this CO2 in this area will go in to this big volume. All of it. And then this dead space over here will also mix into a really big volume. So this is what happens. You have zero millimeters of mercury of CO2, this is a pressure, that you mix with 46 millimeters of mercury of CO2 in the alveolar space. So let's think of this more like two containers of liquids. So if you can consider in your alveolar space in this container over here that you have a one molar solution of sodium chloride in water and um, in this other container over here, you have zero molar solution of sodium chloride over here. And then if you put them together, you would expect that the concentration of this solution over here would be about eh, between zero and one molar of sodium chloride. Something in between. I mean, but the only thing is that you, we wouldn't know exactly what 
molarity of sodium chloride would be unless we knew exactly what volumes we had. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to solve for that. So think of them as liquids. So if we added zero millimeters of mercury of CO2 with 46 millimeters of CO2, we should get something that is between zero and 46 millimeters of mercury of CO2. It's something in between, and we don't know exactly what it is. Next thing I want to tell you that we know is that we know the tidal volume. So tidal volume over here is your um, volume tidal. So let me give you a little bit, let me give you an idea. So the equation that we're using is PV equals PV. And I'm going to show you this other equation that you don't need to memorize. It's just something that shows relationships is PV equals nRT. And what happens is if you look at this equation, is P is pressure, this V is volume, N is moles, R is a constant, T is temperature, and when we look at this equation, we realize that we're not changing temperature at all. I mean, in alveolar gas equation, you have to take care of like water vapor, but in this equation, you don't have to worry about it. R is constant. So when we take a look at the pure PV, PV is actually the amount of moles. PV, pressure times volume with gases with constant temperature and constant temperature is going to be represented of the amount of moles you have. So PV equals PV is actually comparing the amount of moles to moles. That's really neat. Because all we have to do is we have to know the pressure of CO2 in this area and the volume, the pressure and the volume versus the pressure in the volume of the space. And that's all we're doing. All we're doing is we're going to compare the pressure and volume of this space versus the pressure and volume of this space. And then we can determine the volume. So alveolar space is a volume. Um, this CO2 is a pressure within um, that you have gotten from your arterial blood gas. This volume over here is actually your expired. Um, no, this is um, this is the pressure of your expired. And then this over here is just your volume, your tidal volume. the volume. So let's compare. Let's take a look. We have alveolar volume, alveolar pressure versus your expired pressure and a volume. So let's just plug these. All we have to do I'm going to go down a little bit. I'm going to just draw PV equals PV. And I'm going to just draw them down. Okay, you have your alveolar space, which is going to be a volume. That's going to go over here. This 46 millimeters of mercury is going to be some sort of pressure. It's going to go over here. This, this value over here is going to be measured. And it's going to be measured because the person is breathing into a bag, and you can calculate how you can determine um, what your PeCO2 is. So, I mean, technically, this one over here is um, just pressure, uh, P pressure of CO2 expired. This 
this one goes over here and your title line goes over here. Now, let's just go over really quick what do you do know and what do you not know. Avular space is something that we don't know. So I'm going to just make this in red. We do not know that. The pressure of this area over here, the pressure over here is going to be equivalent to your alveolar, your alveolar CO2, which is going to be, that's, that's how you get, you, the way that you get it is from your blood CO2 from your arterial blood gas. So, so you have that, Jack. On the right over here, you have the pressure of CO2 expired. You're breathing into a bag. So if you breathe into this bag and everything is mixed up and everything like that, you can find out um, the pressure of CO2. So this is something we know. Check. And then the tidal volume is also something that we know because uh, you just breathe into this bag. You have a tidal volume. So that's also something that you have you, you know. So the rest is just algebra. So all we have to do is we have to we have this P, we have this V that we don't know, and then we're comparing to P V. This is going to be um I'm just going to make it easier. It's going to be the big volume. The big volume. It's at the expired volume. Let's let's do that. The expired volume. And then this is the pressure of um, your alveolar space, and this is your um, your volume of alveolar space. I'm just going to shorthand it a little bit easier to um, to do the algebra. But all you're doing is going to be solving for um, VA. So VA equals PE with VE with VA. And VA over here is going to be your alveolar volume. Knowing your alveolar volume from this equation, you can then put it into this equation, which is going to be your tidal volume. is going to be the sum of your dead space and your alveolar volume. Remember it because when you when you know that, that, that bar graph that you drew, you have your dead space. Oh, I, I made the alveolar volume red. Remember you have a little bit of dead space? We have your alveolar volume. But your whole entire thing is your tidal volume. Well, all you have to do is plug this in over here. You have your tidal volume. You did it when you breathed into the bag and you solved for dead space. And that's how you solve dead space equations with using this equation. I hope that helps. See you around.